Hi, I'm Professor Graham Yorston. Welcome to 5-Minute Mental Health Disorders. In this episode, I'll be talking about hikikomori, a syndrome of extreme social isolation that was first described in Japan, but is now being increasingly recognized in other cultures. It comes from the Japanese words for pulling inwards and confining oneself but other terms used for affected individuals are modern-day hermits or shut-ins. Japanese psychiatrist Saito Tamaki first described hikikomori in 1998 as adolescence without end, seeing it as a developmental disorder or failure to mature. A number of definitions have been used, but the key features are not working or attending school, not socializing outside the home, staying at home most of the time, except on solitary outings, being socially isolated within the home, significant functional impairment or distress associated with the social isolation, and prolonged duration of at least six months. But these cases often go on for many years. It was originally seen as an entirely Japanese problem, affecting mostly young men who lived with their parents and sat up late watching television or playing computer games in the darkness of their bedrooms, keeping their interactions with others to the bare minimum. It was thought to be influenced by two key aspects of Japanese society, haji, the intense shame of failure, and amai, the expectation of unconditionally indulgent parenting by Japanese children and the willingness of parents to provide this. Other cultural factors such as the clash of historical Confucian teachings that de-emphasize the individual and favor conformity to ensure social harmony and modern pressures to be an individual have also been suggested to underlie the problem. Some psychiatrists have suggested that hikikomori may be a variant of autism spectrum disorder shaped by Japanese culture. One recent study appears to support this conclusion, finding statistically significant differences in autism traits between hikikomori and normal subjects. But when the results are expressed in graphical form, the differences between the two groups are not so impressive. Other studies have shown that up to 80% of hikikomori have some kind of underlying mental disorder, including schizophrenia, autism spectrum disorder, depression, social anxiety, PTSD and personality disorder. Many have multiple disorders. At a brain level, it has been proposed that microglial overactivation via the tryptophan kynurenine pathway may be present in hikikomori, as has been found in other mental disorders and people who have committed suicide. Also, the role of affluence cannot be overlooked. Lower income families simply do not have hikikomori as children have to go out to work outside the home. Japanese government figures estimate that there are over a million people affected, half of whom are first generation hikikomori, now aged 40 to 60, who will soon be forced to reintegrate into society as their parents die off. This equates to around 1.2% of the population and some researchers suggest the prevalence is even higher. 60 to 80% are male. In other countries, it is not a recognized diagnosis, but similar types of behavior, sometimes referred to as basement dwellers in the US, or bamboccioni, or big spoiled babies in Italy, have been described. It appears to be more common in countries in which children remain at home longer, such as Italy and Spain and other East Asian countries. It has been suggested that the forced social isolation of the coronavirus pandemic will lead to a significant increase in the number of cases worldwide. There have been few systematic studies of treatment so far. If an underlying psychiatric disorder is identified, then this should be treated accordingly. But because of the shame associated with the condition, Hikikomori and their families are often reluctant to come forward. Support such as telephone consultations, the creation of meeting spaces, family therapy to encourage tough love and job placement support have been undertaken mainly through mental health welfare centers in Japan. Innovative ideas such as pet and robot therapy have also been tried with some success, as has one uniquely Japanese solution to getting sufferers out of their rooms, rent a sister. As a clinician, I have seen a number of young people in the UK with some of the features of this syndrome who have responded to a combination of antidepressant medication and psychological therapy. Some hikikomori recover and are able to lead more conventional lives. Some remain secluded for years, even decades. But sadly, some choose to end their lives. It is a serious problem. 
So there we have it, five minutes on hikikomori. If you have any suggestions for other topics in this series, please let me know by leaving a comment. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notifications bell so that you're kept up to date with all the latest videos. Bye for now.